What is up, guys? It is Geeks of the West, aka Mooks of the West, and I want to do a video response on Comic Book Cast 2's video, which was created about two months ago. Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace Audio Commentary Podcast, and it's a, it's a pretty good video. It's funny. Uh, they watch the Phantom Menace, and it's basically just the podcast, kind of their commentary, and they talk about it, and within the video, they talk about, you know, things that they don't like about the movie, and whatnot, and they bring up valid points, and I would like to get this out of the way first. I am not a, f I'm not a fanboy of the prequels or the sequels. I like both the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy because I respect them as movies and as different movies separate from each other sort of a creation of the time period that it was set in and on the state that and during the state that George Lucas was in but I will say that I am a fan of Star Wars I would even almost say that I am a fanboy of Star Wars. Um, I like all sorts of Star Wars. So I'm reading Star Wars uh, Dawn of the Jedi about uh, Lenore and her brother Dal, I believe. Um, this secret organization trying to sort of activate this hypergate, I believe it's called. I don't remember, but it includes the planet Tython. It's a pretty good book so far. I recommend it for any Star Wars fans out there. But I just want to say that I, I do like comic book cast too. I, I, I like their videos. They have some good videos. And it's understandable that they like the original trilogy better than the prequel trilogy. And that makes sense because the original trilogy was more of their time period. And I, I'm 18 years old, so the prequel trilogy is my time period. However, I don't prefer the prequel trilogy, and I don't prefer the sequel or the, the original trilogy. So, if I say sequel trilogy, I mean the original trilogy. So, if I mess that up, I'm sorry. Whatever. But, obviously, they have more of a love for the original trilogy, and they're not one of those fans that are just completely shitting on the movie the prequel trilogies but they do bring up things that they don't like about it obviously and so do a lot of other original trilogy fanboys it seems that they just shit on the prequel trilogies like for no reason I understand that they might not like Jar Jar Binks because hey that is kind of an annoying character and a nuisance completely unnecessary character I guess doesn't really add anything to the storyline other than the fact that he is responsible for the upbringing of the Empire or at least the vote that finally granted uh, Chancellor Palpatine the authority that he needed to form the Galactic Republic into the first Galactic Empire episode 3 bitches episode 3 but right off the bat I'm not going to talk about Jar Jar Binks because that's not the main point of this video. So, they, they mentioned that the movie is extremely boring. And I, I'm sitting there, I'm wondering, I like them, I don't hate them. But in my opinion, I was sitting there like, how is it boring? What? Like, what is boring? Because instantly you're hit with action. Okay, they go into the ship. They're supposed to negotiate. Their main ship gets blown up, but they don't know that. The two Jedi, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi, are in the room waiting for the negotiations. But then Viceroy, Gunray or whatever, the uh, leaders of the Trade Federation, realize that, hey, there's Jedi in here, and the Emperor told them to assassinate them, basically. So they send a bunch of droids over, and instantly, lightsaber zoom, zoom, fucking annihilates all the droids. And I'm trying to figure out how is that boring. And then after that, they see that this droid army is getting created. And then they go to Naboo because they're aware of this invasion that is going on. Because they kind of left with the droids or whatever. And they see the invasion of Naboo. 
and instantly you're hit with action Nobu, and then that's where we get the introduction of our most beloved character, Jar Jar Binks. But in my head, I'm still sitting there thinking, how is this boring? How? Because you like the original trilogy, but so far in the first five minutes, all right, 10 minutes, we've seen more action than we did in the first Star Wars in the first 40 minutes. So I'm dating this girl. She's a couple years younger than me, but she hasn't, she hadn't seen the Star Wars movies. So as you should, I showed her the original trilogy first because that's when they came out. That's the way they came out. Those are the first movies out. And that's how you should enjoy the story because you watch uh, the fall of Darth Vader and the rise of Luke Skywalker. You see that story arc first. And then you have the answers, which is the prequel trilogy. I will just say, okay, and before I go on to the point, because this leads to the same point too. A guy I work with, huge Star Wars fan. He loves them both, hates Jar Jar Binks, but he loves both the original and prequel trilogy. And he told me, he's like, you know, as a, I, I'm a huge fan of Star Wars, okay? And I, I love the original trilogies to death, but you know, man, I, I just can't stay awake during them. And he's an older guy. The dude is like 30 years old. So if anything, the original trilogy is closer to his timeline, to his era, more so than it is my era. You know what I mean? And he's one of my good friends at work. I love him. And that hit me like, you know, that's true because I understand how he feels that way because there's a lot of downtime in the original trilogy. So when people say that, oh, the prequels are boring, episode one is just really, really boring. Like, have you not seen the original Star Wars, which is now episode four, A New Hope? It is boring. The first 40 minutes is just the fucking droids. And then some little farmhouse boy who's... I'm not gonna lie, his character in episode one is pretty dull. It's pretty... He has no character. It's... He's this annoying farm boy, which has no substance whatsoever. Yeah, sure, his uh, parents died, or his uncle and aunt died, and now he wants revenge. But there was no emotion in it. Now, I, I will admit that that is George Lucas not being a very uh, good director, but I'll also say... That you love episode four, but you hate episode one because you think episode one is boring and has bad writing. Like, hello, episode four, episode five, and episode six have ridiculously terrible writing. The only, I'm um, okay. Everything I love everything about the Star Wars uh, original trilogy, but if you're, uh, by comparison, the writing is just ridiculous. It's terrible. It's dull. The only substance to it that you have that's actually cool is the relationship between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader and the fact that you find out Darth Vader is his father spoiler alert the fact that you find out Darth Vader is his father at the end of episode 5 that is the only thing that is even quotable in my opinion not quotable but memorable the only thing that is really cool that trumps anything the prequel trilogies have to offer so I mean it you can sit there and you can give me shit or you can say that's just my opinion, but it's true if you really think about it. There is so much more in the prequels than there is the original trilogy. So how is episode 4 boring? I don't understand. <laughs> um, again, I, I, I don't hate comic uh, book cast too. I believe that's their name i don't hate them and you know i'm not shitting on them but i'm just giving my opinion as they gave theirs and they openly gave their opinion so i'm gonna openly give my opinion episode four is boring okay compared to the phantom menace because if you really look at it and then one of the things that they brought up is that there's no main characters introduced in the first like 30 minutes and it was like 30 minutes into the video which is about 30 minutes into the movie as they're watching it like we haven't introduced any main characters yet and okay other than Jar Jar Binks I'm not gonna include him but you're not introduced any main characters what you're introduced Qui-Gon Jinn and you're introduced Obi-Wan Kenobi and then you're introduced the droid army which plays a pretty crucial role in both the Clone Wars movie and the prequel trilogies. 
regardless of what you think, they are main characters. You have your two protagonists, and then you also have your antagonist group, which is Viceroy Gunray, or whatever the hell their name is. And sure, they're not really that important characters, because they only have a big part in the first movie, really. And that, that was a substantially, not so substantial, big part, small part at all. But you're introduced, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, and the droid army. And then you're introduced the Emperor right off the bat. So, and then you're introduced Darth Maul. So you're not introduced any characters whatsoever. And if I recall, Episode 1, A New Hope, Luke Skywalker doesn't even show up until after 40 minutes. The only characters that you get that are even close to important are C-3PO and R2-D2. And yes, they are extremely lovable characters. They are hilarious. But those are the only characters you get. Okay, they didn't take down the Emperor. If, if you thought of Star Wars The Original Trilogy and you asked somebody who the main character was, to somebody who watched it, and I guarantee most people would answer Luke Skywalker. That's just a fact that's just how it is so I'm a little confused on that and they also all right well right now I'm a little pressed on time so I'm probably gonna make a part two of this video anyway that is me talking this is my video response to comic book past two's uh, Phantom Menace commentary video I don't hate the video I enjoyed the video I like that video but I'm just giving my take on their opinions of the Phantom Menace Peace out, guys, and have a good one.